I would like to uh, to now give the uh, <coughs> the floor to uh, to Andrei Kobolev, the uh, CEO of Naftogaz, uh, the Ukrainian uh, integrated uh, gas company. Um, I guess I will show a couple of slides uh, to support my point. But before slides are being put on the screen, I'd like to refer to the point um, the moderator made is that uh, Europe is choosing uh, cheaper supplier uh, at the expense of more reliable one. Um, it's not the case uh, in all countries. In Central Eastern Europe, in many cases, gas from price is much higher than market price. And this decision of Stockholm Tribunal, the first one which will go to the end of 2017, also included specific reference to the fact that Gazprom was overcharging Ukraine. So in some cases, for Western Europe, Gazprom has one approach, whereas for Central Eastern Europe, Gazprom has a different approach. And that approach is based not only on a uh, foreclosing market, uh, but that foreclosing uh, is used to maintain dominant position, and that dominant position is used to overcharge suppliers. So this is one correction I wanted to make. Um, I would like to um, comment on an uh, issue which was often raised today uh, by many speakers, uh, also during previous session, issue uh, which we in Naftogaz and I believe generally in Ukraine are convinced is of strategic in, uh, importance for development uh, not only of gas market in Ukraine properly, but also for um, fully integrating um, Ukraine into European gas market uh, without leaving possibility to, to reverse that integration. I must say that from point of view of naft um, gas, there, there are some people who doubt whether we are serious about this. I'd like to make two comments about uh, unbundling um, why we are serious about this. Firstly, it is exactly our team who proposed that unbundling should be made in 2014. One would wonder why. I am always citing um, one strategic thinker uh, to my personnel, that when you talk about strategy, many people like to discuss where you want to get, where you want to be, visions, goals, and uh, stuff like that. Definitely it's all important, but from my perspective, any strategic document should start with a bit different paragraph. It should start with a paragraph what you are prepared to sacrifice to get what you want to get, because otherwise it makes no sense. From Naftogaz perspective, we are prepared and we were prepared and we proposed that transit business and gas transmission business in general should be moved outside the group of Naftogaz for several reasons. To remove from us monopoly tech in Ukraine, firstly. Secondly, to make sure transit uh, is kept in Ukraine because it's a matter of strategic interest. With time, four years have passed, I see another, the last one but not least important reason to do unbundling. And that reason is quite simple. We've achieved certain significant market change. That change comes from quite simple to understand but difficult to achieve exercise, removing corruption. Mr. Firtas he is still in Vienna in his beautiful castle, but he is not managing our HDS anymore. That's one of the biggest achievements. And uh, because of that, we are, ma we are making progress in diversification, uh, in creating uh, supplies from Europe, in allowing free third-party access to our network and many other things. But if since change and he is back, all efforts of our team, these four years of our time invested, will be basically wasted. And the best way to achieve irreversibility is to make sure there is a European partner that would manage our DTS and that partner will make sure that corrupt people will never be back. So that's the point. Those three points are very important to understand after gas real intent. So when we are being told by some people, why don't you just give away the system to someone, except for all other considerations such as trends and Gazprom, I'm also asking someone meaning to whom. Can you show us properly structured entity with proper corporate governance that will ensure compliance and transparency in the future, which means proper arm's length basis approach to all market participants, not only enough to gas. As soon as that 
partner is there and we are looking for that partner. And as soon as we comply with our transit contract with Gazprom, that can be achieved. That's just a start which describes point of view of NAFTA gas and our ideology. Uh, I would just start with a small brief uh, mentioning of a couple of parameters of the Ukrainian system. Can you please move to the next slide? Uh, you probably know about this. system is huge, uh, 38,000 kilometers. It is not currently overcapacitated, though we had quite high transit uh, in previous year as a capacity. Sorry, 146 uh, billion cubic meters per year. Um, and uh, the um, uh, relation between domestic consumption and transit is approximately one to three. So our system, 75% of its, uh, let's say, revenues and its activities are performed around transit of gas, uh, exclusively Russian gas, uh, to European countries. Next slide, please. What is also interesting about our system, uh, our system has the uh, highest coefficient of variation between usual daily transit volume and peak uh, volumes. It's close to 30%. If we compare to North Stream, the coefficient there is less than 1%. Next slide, please. And if you look at the reliability of the system, if you look at disruption index, we are comparing currently ourselves to Gazprom, and the index is adjusted to the length of the system. So basically it's uh, divided also by the difference in lengths. Uh, our system is significantly more reliable. Given all those technical parameters, uh, one would wonder uh, what is preventing us from unbundling. And as uh, we love to say, and there's English expression, there's elephant in the room. In our case, it's not elephant. We have a bear in the room. And um, I was personally choosing this picture uh, because our team gave like an aggressive bear, but I believe they are wrong. It's not aggressive bear. It's a very relaxed, well-fed, pretty much uh, comfortable bear. He read yesterday the report from Antitrust Commission. He likes it. Nice report. Thank you so much. Uh, and he's waiting. Because basically there is nothing to shred the bear. So he just sits there and uh, is doing nothing. Uh, why uh, the bears are important for consideration of unbundling? Uh, and I mentioned this uh, relation between uh, domestic transportation and transit uh, for important purpose. Uh, if you would imagine a transmission system uh, where 25% of activities is compliant with certain energy package, and 75 percentage is not compliant because Gazprom doesn't want to comply. Can you consider unbundling effective? I think the obvious answer is no. The answer is supported by all people who understand what unbundling means and how it should be working. Next slide, please. Uh, we and after gas um, started addressing the issue uh, in 2014. We have requested formally Gazprom to comply with EU energy law, in particular to give us permission to reassign existing contract to a newly created operator. Well, expectedly Gazprom refused because they usually say no to anything which undermines position of the bear. Uh, Naftagas suggested lateral discussion in the format which was successful to ensure gas supply to Ukraine. Gazprom refused because they said it's not the matter for discussion with EU, uh, it's bilateral negotiations, so they simply refused. Uh, as an outcome, we decided to go to Stockholm Tribunal, uh, and uh, Stockholm Tribunal in March 2018 ruled that it's not up to them to decide whether Gazprom should be required to resign the contract or not, but it's up to Ukrainian and European regulators to decide. And it's up to them, because they're the ones who should have the leverage to make Gazprom comply with legislation. Which, by the way, on one hand is quite pragmatic, on the other hand, is a very relevant decision, because that's exactly the role of the regulators. Next slide. Uh, while waiting for Gazprom decision, uh, Naftagas team has achieved certain elements of progress. Uh, gas market law was uh, implemented, which is compliance with energy package. Uh, we have created an independent, well, not independent, but at least separated branch 
and all assets of existing GJS operator were moved to this branch, and that branch can be used in the future as a basis for creating a fully separate TSO by simply taking branch outside Naftogaz after after group and moving elsewhere. Uh, we also ensure third-party access uh, for everybody in the market. And I believe that companies who are working in Ukraine currently, and we have a huge number of big companies importing and selling gas, can confirm that TPA in Ukraine is actually not a joke. It's actually working. Where we are still not capable of complying with the uh, European key uh, is that we cannot move fully this branch outside Nafta Gas Group because our contact with Gazprom requ requires us specifically to control the system. Otherwise, if we do it, the easiest move Gazprom can do is based on that move, simply cancel the contract. And Ukraine is a country, and Nafta Gas as a group is making approximately 3% of our GDP on transit currently. For us, it's a vital amount. Next slide, please. Uh, key considerations which should be taken into account as to how unbundling should be done after the end of the contract. Firstly, it's compliance with European law. Secondly, proper capacity booking, either by Gazprom or other EU of takers, or maybe Russian companies. And uh, thirdly, uh, we should take into consideration how our transit rate can uh, vary depending on the volumes and the time of the booking. Uh, our current rate of 2.40 cm per 100 kilometers uh, for 110 BCM can be even lowered, provided there is a company uh, like Gazprom, for example, who will do a big long-term booking with other proper conditions, such as our ability to pledge contracts and trust lower capital because of that. Uh, how we believe is a, what is the most evident and the best route to achieve, on one hand, unbundling, on the other hand, on the other hand compliance, and uh, also to ensure an irreversibility change, as I mentioned before. Next slide, please. Uh, our position in Gas, and that was our position 2014, which was later translated through support of people, deputies of Ukraine, into a new law, that we should attract strategic partner. And the law which was adopted then is quite revolutionary, because for the first time in Ukrainian history, uh, our parliament allowed to engage any company which is not state-owned but outside Ukraine into uh, joint uh, either ownership or management of Ukrainian GTS. Uh, what we are also considering Nafta Gas, and that's our advice to the state and to the government, is that if there is not willingness from international partners to take control over the whole system, separation of transit can be considered, and separation of underground gas storages, which is quite a expensive but not much, let's say, profitable asset to uh, cover the cost of capital can be moved out of the equation. If there is willingness to manage the asset, it can be done. If there is willingness to manage only transit, we enough to guys believe that option should be seriously considered. Next slide, please. To simplify decision making uh, in terms of unbundling, uh, giving our bearings room, we have developed two simple decision trees. First one is for the period until 2019, and uh, it basically starts with a simple question. Uh, can regulator and uh, EU uh, bodies make Gazprom amend the transit contract to comply with the law? Uh, if the answer is yes, there is an option until 2019, actual transfer assets complete and bundling, uh, unlock full virtual uh, reverse flow, become fully compliant with certain energy package. If answer is no, and so far it has been no, you can't do anything of the above without significantly damaging interests of both Ukraine and European gas consumers. Because interruption of gas in case of cancellation of contract becomes a very, very possible scenario, as was done already in 2009. However, after 2019, we have more options. Next slide, please. If you look what will happen when the contract will expire, we believe uh, that, firstly, we should try 
to have a proper contract with Gazprom, where Gazprom will book capacity under Ukrainian law. Uh, foreign partner will be responsible for managing Ukrainian system, which will automatically mean that full ownership and bundling becomes possible and should be done. And in that case, uh, partnership model uh, between operator and Ukraine government in terms of either management contract or lease, or if there is a willing partner to purchase a system that can be also considered, should be implemented. The same model can be implemented uh, if, let's say, Gazprom says no, we don't buy, uh, we don't want to book capacities, but the point which can be uh, implemented there is that Gazprom can start giving gas on the western border of Russia, eastern border of Ukraine, and new of takers can book capacity. So far, I know at least two companies who've tested that idea with Gazprom. All of them received negative reply. Uh, Gazprom, the latest discussion we heard uh, was people who went to Moscow to talk about uh, this, uh, is that like, look guys, all old contracts stay, but if we have a new contract with someone, maybe then. Which again, I understand is a way of saying no. Uh, if all of those options are not available, then again, either after gas or any other state-owned company will have to start doing swaps. That's the last option we believe, and then only ITO model on bundling, if it's not the gas, would be possible. Uh, next slide, please. Our view is that in terms of implementation of unbundling, it's important to allow to negotiate properly, starting with the most compliant and most comprehensive uh, decision on the last decision tree, the first one. In this respect, we very much welcome negotiations which have been shared with the European Commission. We hope those negotiations will include Gazprom. And uh, I have uh, long experience talking to these guys somewhere from 2006. Uh, my position, uh, I've told, our European colleagues is quite simple. If Gazprom is not in the room, there is no point to talk to anyone because that's a trick. You can decide anything with the Minister of Energy, then Mr. Miller comes, reminds everybody that they are a private joint stock company with majority shareholding of the state, but still there are private investors and that's why position of the Minister of Energy is not crucial for him. I've seen this many times. So Gazprom should be in the room. And uh, if, uh, no matter how successful those negotiations are, uh, we believe that with the help of the uh, European Commission, Ukrainian side should continue the process of finding partners for our system in order to make sure that by the end of 2019, specifically by January 2020, the contract with new partner will be signed. And when our contract is ex expires with Gazprom, system can be managed with assistance of proper international uh, and compliant uh, with European legislation energy company. Uh, thank you for your attention. Um, many thanks, Mr. Uh, Mr. Kobolev. Um, I think that was a, a very structured and very strategic approach, and uh, it's much to be discussed about that. And you uh, you mentioned at the beginning about uh, the the need um, for workable, proper unbundling of an EU partner in the uh, in the gas transit system, which leads me to the uh, to the two last speakers, uh, which are both representing uh, Europe.